So what you see here is a 5,000 BTU window unit type of air conditioner. So this is just an air conditioner, not a heat pump. It's just your standard old cheap 5,000 BTU unit that you would buy at Home Depot or Amazon, Walmart, whatever. We've had this one for probably 10 years and it still works, you know, pretty well. So I wanted to find out exactly how well it would run off of lithium iron phosphate specifically a 100 amp hour 12.8 volt battery. Now a 12 volt 100 amp hour battery, like this one down here, which has been tested, this uh, Dr. Prepare, you know, capacity tested well, ran well, everything's good on that. But in all reality, maybe a brand new unit might do a little better because the surge might be lower. The older an air conditioner gets, the higher it's gonna surge probably when it starts. In all reality, a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery is really not gonna cut it. Not just one, not because it won't run the AC normally, but because of the surge. So unless you have like a soft start on it, you're gonna have a surge on that AC unit that's probably gonna be higher than the surge on the 100 amp hour battery. I'm not saying you can't do it because we do have a portable AC unit that runs just fine, off of a 100 amp hour battery, but it is a portable AC unit and it doesn't cool nearly as much as this unit does here. You know, to really do this test, I've got this little yellow jumper cable here and I put another 100 amp hour battery that also capacity tested very well. So I'll put those two together in parallel to make it 12.8 volt, 200 amp hours. And the reason I did that wasn't just to really get the longevity of it. I know it can handle it longevity wise, but it's just to handle the surges when it kicks on and off. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run these two batteries together with that inverter that's down there. That's a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And I know the inverter can handle it. So I'm putting those two batteries together and I'm gonna let them run this air conditioner unit and I'm gonna watch how much power it pulls and how long we can get out of a you know, decently set temperature wise. And when I say decently set right now, it's about 75 degrees in this room. So I'm going to set the AC unit below that maybe to 65, which is a 10 degree difference. You may be just trying to cool your room down from 95 to 85 or 85 to 75, something like that. So I'm also keeping that temperature gauge down there so we can watch it. And then I also got a battery monitor set up. So anyways, this is just gonna give us an idea of what a lithium iron phosphate battery can do when it comes to running, you know, a small little window unit like this. So let me get this all ready and we'll start the test. So just to reiterate what I was kind of talking about with the ampage that these batteries will put out, they're not meant to kick out massive bursts of ampage. So this one is a 100 amp continuous discharge current. It can probably burst up to maybe 200 amps, something like that for a short period of time. But we're needing a lot more than that. We're probably going to be hitting the 4,000 watt range just to start this up, which would be, you know, more than this one can handle. Not a lot more. So if you have a battery that can surge some of these batteries, and I say some because it's not very many, I've seen even have, you know, surges up to like 500 amps. So if you have one of those type of batteries or if you're looking to do this specifically off of just one battery you're gonna need to get one that has a really high surge rating on it even for just a short period of time but 100 amps is going to easily run this air conditioner by itself when it's not surging to start up but let me show you what happens when you just have a battery one battery that doesn't have a massively high surge rating and what it does with you know trying to kick this ac unit on so these cables here that are running down to the second battery i did disconnect them so they're just not they're not plugged into the battery below it so it's just one battery so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put this uh battery monitor on and i'll reset it after this real quick test uh so that we were starting at zero but let's go ahead and turn this on so you can see what one battery would do for an AC like this. Inverter's on, it's kicking up, it's doing everything it needs to do. 
AC control panel turns on, but the AC unit is not on. It's just powering it like you would plug it into the wall. And now that everything's calmed down, I'm going to go ahead and hit the power button. And I'm going to turn this off because I don't want to keep hearing that. So the issue here is, is when the compressor motor on this AC unit kicks on, it surges. And that's very normal for AC units or refrigerators or anything like that that have a compression motor in them. The only way to really get around that or make that less of a burst is to put what they call a soft start on it. And it really wouldn't be worth it for things like this. But if you have like an RV air conditioner or something like that, you know, that might be something you'd want to put a soft start on. So that way you don't over surge, you know, whatever you have in your RV. But in this case, wouldn't do it. It would normally be plugged into a regular 120 volt outlet and the surge would be no problem. All right, so now I'm gonna turn this on with both batteries connected up. This is going to the second battery to make these all in parallel. So this should now help with the ampage. I'm just giving a little bit of time for the test and everything to start up, make sure everything's ready. And then now we'll go ahead and kick this on. So as you can see, it handled the jolt of power that it needed because it had two batteries parallel together that can handle that extra ampage. So both of them had to push ampage into that converter to get this thing started. So now what we have is 200 amp hours of 12.8 volt batteries. And now this is not the same as one 12.8 volt battery that is 200 amp hours, unless you're looking at one that is 200 amps on its continuous discharge and it has a much higher peak discharge, mainly because a lot of the 200 amp hour batteries that are 12.8 volts still have a BMS in them that can only handle 100 amps continuous or 150 amps continuous. So for these two to be put together, you've got to not only think about what the BMS's continuous rating is, but what also its peak is. And a lot of times, like I said, the, the 200 amp hour batteries, they're giving you more capacity, but they're not really upgrading the BMS a lot to be, you know, double the ampage. There are many out there that do. So you can definitely find a 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour battery that has a 200 amp continuous BMS in it. But, you know, maybe the peak might not be high. So you just really need to look at those specs. That's really what I'm trying to tell you here is, is you got to combine the two and you got to look at all the different specs. But again, amp hour wise, that is you know, how long it's going to be able to run and the actual ampage that it puts out is can it handle putting out enough amps to handle the AC. But these two together can, I'm going to get these all topped off and then we're going to run this. It'll be 200 amp hours worth. And then if we really want to know what 100 amp hours at 12.8 volts would do, we could just divide that in half. That would give you a good estimate. But again, you'd have to have a battery that can handle the peak ampage that's being pulled. So enough talking about this, let's go ahead and get this thing running and see what a lithium iron phosphate battery like this can do for this AC. All right, so as you can see, I've got the battery monitor all reset again. I did charge both batteries again to just top them off. They didn't have much off, but so as you can see the 13.9 resting voltage, that's just because I just took the battery charger off, it is dropping, but that's close to the resting point. And again, if you'll notice the thermometer 75 degrees in the room, so I think I've got everything ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the inverter on and get this test started. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and turn the air compressor on. And as you can see, I actually already had it set at 65. So yeah, we're good to go. It is on cool. The fan speed is on high. 
no timer or nothing else is on so this thing is just going to run until it can't run anymore so i'm going to go ahead and stop the video now and as soon as this thing gets pretty low and i think we're getting close to the stopping point i'll start back up again and we'll watch it drop out and then we'll just see you know how much time we got out of two 100 amp hour batteries all right i'll keep an eye on it and be back in a moment so i've been keeping an eye on this and this is about the time where you know your 100 amp hour battery if it could provide enough ampage to deal with the jolts of power would probably be getting to the end so we're at about two and a half hours now i do have this set at 65 and the room was at 75 and i actually thought it would cool the room a little quicker but this is a small ac unit and it's in a rather big room so it is going down though but you know an ac unit this size of 5000 btu isn't going to cool super quickly especially when outside it's 100 degrees this is doing good the room feels nice but you're going to be mostly running that compressor you know the whole time trying to bring it down 10 degrees so this is just a point that i wanted to show but we're going to continue and let it keep going until we've got both batteries knocked out and that way we can get a good idea of what you know this whole test is about all right so as you can see it's been running for about four hours and 40 minutes it is getting toward the end and if you notice also it's used pretty close to both batteries you know full capacity it's at 2.46 kilowatt hours which that could be a little higher and we're almost at 200 amp hours 199 both of these batteries I'm using did, you know, test capacity wise great. Of course, we are running it at about a constant 520 ish, something like that, watts, which is over, you know, 0.2C. So it's a little higher than you would normally test these batteries at. But, you know, they're still going strong. It's beeping just because the inverter is detecting low voltage, but I'm sure we're going to get full capacity out of both batteries. But if you look here, you're getting about four hours and 40 minutes, eh, close to five hours. So this thing has never turned off. It's been using the same amount of wattage from start to finish. So if you have an AC unit like this and you have one battery that's 100 amp hours and it does have enough power to, you know, burst out and peak to start the motor on your compressor, you're going to get about two hours of full compression runtime from your AC unit. Now again, this is an older AC unit. This one's at least 10 years old and it's been well used. It still does great, but it's definitely well used. I have a portable AC unit that is about the same size. I think it's 5,000 or 5,500, something like that BTU. And it can easily start on one of these batteries with no problem. So, you know, the compressor's just jolting a little harder on this one because it is getting older. So if you have a brand new AC unit, you may be able to get by with one battery. But if you really want to run an AC unit, I would probably recommend at least two. That way you know you have you know enough power, you can run it for four to five hours, and you don't have to worry about it kicking off when it's trying to uh, start the motor, if the motor is kicking on and off. But that's it. I hope this information was helpful, and I hope this answers some questions for some people. If you like these kind of videos, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.